David, we are so happy that you're shared this time together with us really here at Nilda Alive. Welcome. Good to see you. Good to be here. Well, I would really like to talk with you today about the art life. Would you talk to us about the art life and just explain it to us? Well, uh, it's real simple. The art life is um, smoking cigarettes, drinking coffee, occasionally uh, red wine, transcendental meditation, and work. So how in that, how do we find our voice when we're looking for our art life? Well, we find our voice by beginning uh, to work in one medium or another. And I always say every medium uh, is infinitely deep and every medium will speak to us and we get a dialogue going with the medium and we start learning what it does and what it doesn't do and how it wants to work be worked with and uh, we start um, working and little by little we get the hang of the medium and ideas start flowing for that medium and we we um, start producing things and it's a process of experimentation and action and reaction but little by little your particular way will start showing itself and it'll be unique to you and you'll start um, getting deeper and deeper into the medium, you'll start just enjoying every minute of it, and uh, it'll be a beautiful trip. Do you even remember when you began your art life? I remember it um, as if it was yesterday. <laughs> um, I, uh, when I was in the eighth grade, apparently I did well in science and math. So uh, when I went to the ninth grade, my family had moved from Boise, Idaho to Alexandria, Virginia. My father was transferred to Washington, D.C. Alexandria is right across the river from Washington, D.C. So uh, I was in a new place in a new school and I was starting high school, nine through 12. And I, they had me sign up for what I was going to be mainly focusing on. And since I had done well in science and math, I just signed up for those things. Well, later that same year, the ninth grade, I was over at my girlfriend's house. And I was leaving there around 9.30 or 10 at night. And I met on the front lawn of her house a boy named Toby Keeler. He went to private school, and I had never met him before, and he, we started talking, and he told me his father was a painter. And I thought at first a house painter, but then he said, no, 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 a fine art painter. And a uh, literal like um this this explosion a bomb went off in my head and it was in a millisecond all i wanted to be was a painter and i knew that that's what i wanted to be and i knew i wanted to be that before and i knew that that was it and so it changed everything that's when the art life began because I met Toby's father, who was the painter, and um, I rented a room in his studio downtown Alexandria, and I uh, started working all the time and painting, and um, 
it, it or in that time, uh, this thing of the art life uh, developed. So I know to you that routine is very important. Does it help creativity? And, and what is your routine? My routine is um, I like to do this, eat the same thing every day. I like to pretty much do the um, kind of living part of the day the same. Uh, but the difference is what I'm working on. So that's where all the different things come in. And I, I believe if, if you eat the same thing, wear the same thing, do the same things, uh, then you have time to think about the work. So that's how it kind of goes. In the morning, I have a cup of coffee, and then I meditate, and then I, I get to work. I eat so, the same thing for lunch. I eat the same thing for dinner. That's, that's very interesting. I think most of us would find that very uh, interesting, I, but I can see how it removes obstacles. Um, how is art thrilling to your soul and to our souls? Well, I think we like, um, we like to cr create things, make things, and um, it's a thrill for human beings to make things and to solve problems creativity is problem solving and um so it's part of being a human being is um making things uh and somehow we find it thrilling is the art life then for everyone or just for artists the art life is um it's you know everyone is an artist in a way because if you're a dentist you could be uh, thrilled by thinking about teeth and what you could do to make things uh, easier for, you know, for drilling or a better way to lock the filling in or a new kind of thing you want to experiment with. Um, uh, Susie's bridge, you know, you'd be thinking about that, making it really strong and perfect. And that one tooth has got to be buffed out. You know, you, get, you start thinking about teeth and the oral cavity and you got ideas and a thrill and um, every patient would be a little bit different. You solve these problems, make them very, very happy. And um, so, um, and it's all a, a lot of creativity and all sorts of businesses, all kinds of things, all kind of new inventions are always coming. And, uh, so everybody's involved in some way in the art life, for sure. So Joseph Campbell took a vow never to do anything for the sake of money. I have a feeling that you have a similar feeling about money. Do money and reward affect you? Here's the thing, you know, um, most everything, I, uh, first of all, um, I believe, you know, that fate and luck play a huge role in our lives huge maybe it's it's the maybe the number one thing and i've been so lucky to be able to make money on what i love to do but i would do it whether i was paid or not see that's the thing and i've been poor and i liked i i, I had a it was a different time uh, things were much cheaper. I remember uh, filling up a gas, uh, uh, my gas tank, which I think held 10 gallons. It was a Volkswagen for $3. $3 filled the whole thing. Now $3, you know, won't even get you a cup of gas. That's right. So it's unbelievable. But I was able to live and get all the stuff uh, just by delivering the Wall Street Journal, I had a paper route. So um, it's um, a lot of people want to paint or uh, get into uh, the art world, art life, and but they don't have the tools because they don't have the money. They don't have the space. They don't have the money. They don't 
to have the food because they don't have the money. They need to get a job. And the job is usually, you know, eight hours a day. I had my paper route down to one hour a day. So uh, I only worked five hours a week and was able to make enough money. So, and when you have to have a job to survive, then you're tired when you finish that job. And uh, you don't really feel like, you know, uh, starting a painting or, or some kind of project. So it's a heartache. And that's where fate and luck come in. Right. But you got to find a time to do the things that you love. And hopefully somebody might see that or it could lead to something. You've got to keep on trying, keep on keeping on. And I always say, start transcendental meditation right away. Because every time a human being transcends, they're visiting the big treasury within. In that treasury is unbounded intelligence, creativity, happiness, love, energy, power, and peace within every human being. Every time you transcend, you experience that field, that treasury, and every time you transcend, you infuse some of that. You begin to expand whatever consciousness you had to begin with, and you start expanding all those positive qualities. And you start, as a byproduct, dissipating stress, negativity, anxieties, tension, sorrow, depression, hate, anger, and fear all start lifting away automatically the more consciousness you start expanding. Every human being has consciousness, but not every human being has the same amount. But the potential for every one of us glorious human beings is infinite consciousness, enlightenment. All we got to do is transcend every day, get to that treasury, infuse that, and grow in that. Unfold our enlightenment. Unfold a better and better and better life every single day. And you get support of nature. Nature likes people expanding consciousness and those all positive qualities. And support of nature is like getting luck, getting fate on your side. It's money in the bank. So add that to your life. Then I, you know, stress is the enemy to creativity. Stress closes down, you know, so much. Ideas don't flow. You get this technique of transcendental meditation, the conduit through which ideas flow opens and opens and opens. Instead of being squeezed by stress and negativity, now it's opening and ideas start flowing. Support of nature, ideas flowing, solutions to problems, happiness in the doing. One thing I found, many people work, they don't work, they're not so happy in the working, in the doing. They do it for the money or the end result. This is like a thing bringing in all this bubble of happiness growing. You start getting happy doing anything. You, got, you get happy. This bubble of happiness has got to grow in us human beings. We got to enjoy life. What do you experience? If you don't, if you could share with us, David, what do you experience when you are practicing transcendental meditation? I experience bliss. I get down in there. This field within is infinite bliss, infinite happiness. It doesn't always come right away, but over time, you settle down into that field. It's, it's sublime. It's blissful. It's, it's such a beautiful experience. And you come out rejuvenated, refreshed, more energy, ready to go. And it, it, it's like, um, all these, like I say, positive qualities start coming out. So it's, it, they say transcending is a holistic experience. So all avenues of life start getting better. Holistic. 
it's the big self with a capital S that you experience. There's a line, know thyself. This is that self. It's within us all, the big self. And uh, things get very, very, very good. So I experience bliss. I experience refreshing, you know, rejuvenation. Uh, and I feel that um, this happiness and rejuvenation carries, you know, more and more and more. A bigger picture of life starts emerging. People start looking better, not like enemies, but more like friends, more like family. And uh, all, the, all the things start being appreciated more in life. It's, 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 it's for the human being, this field. So for some reason, we've lost contact with it. But this technique of transcendental meditation will, it's like being given a key that opens the door to the uh, treasury. And it's the treasury that does everything good for us. Transcendental meditation is just the key that opens the door. So uh, it's not a religion. It's not against any religion. You don't even have to believe it will work and it will work. In brain research, all, all the different meditations that are out in the world now have been tested, researched, and transcendental meditation is the only one that gives the experience of transcending, that really gets you to the treasury. Others give you some relaxation, but mainly they keep you near the surface of life. Transcendental meditation, ancient form of meditation, a mental technique that truly gets you to the treasury. And the treasury is what does everything good for the human being. So reestablish that contact with that treasury, visit it every day, and watch things get really good. It's certainly something our world needs right now. You are not kidding. Well, you know, your foundation does bring uh, transcendental meditation to at-risk populations, which is so wonderful. Um, one of those is students, children. How do our students need, our children need transcendental meditation? Okay, so um, I think, I'm sure there are some students that say, oh boy, it's Monday morning, I'm off to school. Uh, but that's not the case for um, a lot of students. And they don't go to school filled with happiness. Uh, uh, there are many, many, everybody has some degree of stress these days. And there are many students who have, unfortunately, traumatic stress. Yes. And so you picture these students, inside is this torment, torment, serious torment. Yes. And it shuts down the machine. And it causes people to do strange things that are not necessarily friendly things because of this torment that's eating them alive. So people have tried, well-wishers of humanity have tried making prettier schools, nice painted walls, new books, computers, one-on-one, -on -one, more one-on-one -on -one time with the teacher. It doesn't address the torment. Alcohol does it, it, it it masks the torment. Right. Drugs mask the torment. It doesn't get rid of the torment. So you give them this technique of transcendental meditation. Boom, they get to that deepest level of life, the eternal level. And right away, that torment starts to just fly out of them and it's replaced with happiness in more intelligence more love more energy more inner contentment and things start changing for that student now the teachers say oh billy can focus 
Billy's with us. Billy's actually getting happier. Billy, look at the creativity coming out of Billy. And the relationships among the students get better. Bullying stops, fighting stops. In some schools that got TM, there was a fight at least once a week that brought police and the ambulance. These things now, students says, before someone says something like that to me, boom, it's a it's serious fight. Now, I laugh at, it's like water off a duck's back. I laugh it off. I put my arm around him and I say, let's go get a coffee or a Coke or whatever. And it's a different story. Teachers stop getting teacher burnout. They start to enjoy teaching again. It comes from within. They get rid of that torment. They get rid of that stress. All these negativity things start flowing out. It's, I say transcendental meditation is like bringing gold from within and saying goodbye to garbage. And it's a real thing. And it's, it's going to be everywhere relatively soon because it's common sense. It's for the human being, all human beings, no matter what. You know, it's interesting, David, because I used to teach at a Title I school for eight years. And I can tell you the stories I heard from kindergartners, like someone came in, boyfriend came in, destroyed the house last night. And here's this child in front of me. Imagine if I would have had TM as a tool used in our school to help that little boy. You would have helped that little boy so much. And that little boy would grow up and come by and thank you so much. And that little boy would go on and get that TM for all his friends and all his friends' kids. It's just the way it is. They see the change. They say, this is the ticket. This is a real change for the good. Not a, not a, you know, there's the phrase that got me meditating is true happiness is not out there. True happiness lies within. And that phrase had a ring of truth to it to, for me. But they don't tell you where the within is, nor do they tell you how to get there. So now I know that there is a within, and I know that it's the unified field, called the unified field by modern quantum physics. It's the ocean of pure consciousness. It underlies the field of relativity. It's non-relative absolute. It's an eternal field. Everything in the field of relativity has a lifespan. Underlying that is this field that's eternal, and it's always full. It's unbounded, infinite, eternal, immutable, immortal. And it's our big friend. It's all positive. And we can visit it every single day. And it changes life for the good. It absolutely does. How does this help then when we're facing success and failure and playing that out in the art life? Okay, so you're working along and somebody says something very nice about your work and uh, another person says something very bad about your work. These things, both these things are, could be recipes for disaster. And so if you feel self-assured, stronger in yourself, happy, and you have all these positive things cooking inside yourself, you're not swayed by, you know, these external things so much. So what happens is, though, the, I always say the events of our life may stay the same, but how we go through them will certainly be better with Transcendental Meditation. Right. So the highs you'll experience, you'll enjoy them more, and the lows won't kill you. And so it's, it's um, again, money in the bank. A failure kills some people. You identify with your work, you, get, you have a failure, you, you might get very ill, You're, you can't help yourself. You might get sick and die from a failure. And a success can make you second guess the next thing you do. 
and cramp you and worry you that you're going to fall and that success is going to disappear. It's, it's, it's just better to get that, that feeling inside that you're just happy uh, to be able to work and in loving the work and successes and failures are kind of like, like I say, you enjoy the, a success if it happens and it doesn't make you get crazy and you don't feel the pain so much of a failure. You just pick up and go on to the next thing e easier. And it's just that way because they got all this stuff inside that's helping you. So what suggestions do you have to bring more creativity to our world? Transcend every day. That's a field of unbounded creativity, the creativity that creates everything that is a thing. So if you get wet with that every day, it's, gonna, it's going to, um, common sense would tell you it'd be very good for creativity to get some of that unbounded creativity flowing. And uh, so again, all they say that there are no problems, there's only solutions. So um, in every field of life, we need solutions these days. And there's so many problems. And I think that um, all the solutions are in there somewhere. And if, if some scientist is, gets his technique and gets down in there, those solutions are going to come more easily. And um, for every walk of life, there's problems and solutions are there waiting for us. We just got to catch them. Stress and all this stuff, negativity blocks the, the flow of those solutions those ideas that we need. Well, you know, David, I just appreciate you being here. We have a short time today, but I appreciate you sharing so much. You have honored to be able just to speak with you for a while. And I am looking at the beautiful trees behind you. It looks like you might have a pretty day for that art today. Is that right? Yeah, I've been watching beautiful, your- <laughs> Beautiful day. We've been watching your weather report. Oh, good deal. <laughs> yeah, we got a real beautiful day coming along here. Well, I want you to go enjoy it and be able to do your artwork. I thank you so much. Your wisdom. Thank is you, Nelda, very much. It was such nice an talking honor to, to you. Hear it. Okay. Great. Thank Take you good so care much. of yourself, Nelda. You too. Okay. Okay. Bye bye. So long. Bye bye. Real change for the good truly begins within.